As you said, Leo, you're going to have Sammy Kemkar on, which I think will be great. He is a, a real character and I mean, a, and a class act hacker. Uh, I have a video. He He's produced a video of what he has done recently that was it was up there as one of the top two stories of this past week, just in terms of our listeners making sure I knew about it. Uh, he's created something he calls Poison Tap, and it's exploiting locked computers over USB, which – and he went public with this last Wednesday. Now, if you ask yourself, why does that sound familiar, it's because this is – a weaponized extension of the exploit we discussed in early September. A different hacker named Rob Fuller, uh, and we, we gave it full coverage in the, in the beginning of September, he uh, created a posting snagging creds from locked machines. And at the time, he was using a much more expensive, I think it was $155 a uh, computer-based USB dongle. And the idea is, and we discussed it then, that when you stick a USB into a machine that is on, even if it's locked, if the lid's closed, if it's, you know, if, if it's like inaccessible, if that USB device claims through the USB enumeration to be a network adapter, unfortunately, it instantly gets all kinds of unquestioned privilege. And so Rob showed us early in September how he was able to take the, a USB Ethernet device and exploit some features of DHCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, uh, with some another person's responder software in order to essentially get the password hashes from the system and then perform an offline brute force attack in order to crack the, the passwords. And this is a problem that Windows has had for a long time. Their, their earlier, especially their earlier password hashing was not very good. You know, the old landman, we were talking about that a lot <laughs> a decade ago. So that was then. Now, Sammy came along and said, ooh, that's interesting. Uh, and he rolled up his sleeves and just, just went to town. So uh, this thing, uh, he calls it applied hacking is, is sort of his banner. Si so, uh, so poison tap siphons cookies, exposes internet in the internal router, and installs web backdoors on locked computers. Uh, it produces a cascading effect by exploiting the existing trust, as he describes it, in various mechanisms of a machine and network, including USB or Thunderbolt, DHCP, DNS, and HTTP, to produce a snowball effect of information exfiltration, network access, and installation of semi-permanent backdoors using a $5 weaponized Raspberry Pi Zero. So, uh, so essentially, the problem is when a, when a network interface spontaneously appears, the operating system enumerates it, says, oh, you know, the user must want to get on that network. And so the first thing that happens is... Uh, it receives a DHCP query. Well, DHCP is very powerful, and, and we've talked about it extensively in the past. The minimum thing that it does is give you an IP address. It can also give you DNS, and it can also declare uh, various routing parameters. That is, DHCP is way more than just IP and DNS. Th there, it, there's an extensive vocabulary of what it's able to offer. So by, by leveraging the fact that an innocent computer made the mistake of querying 
a very powerful, malicious DHCP server, which, which nothing, nothing prevents, essentially. It's able, he's able to roll that into sort of, sort of incrementally by, by, by gaining a foothold, doing something, then then pushing it further, and then substantiating that 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 position, basically just walk into your computer and take it over, uh, and, and ending up, for example, rerouting all of the traffic that the machine is sending on a valid interface through it. So it's able to, if you're not using HTTPS, to uh, to strip headers, to prevent security provisions that are by default available in HTTPS, because of course that the tunnel is unencrypted. So by intercepting the traffic, he's able to, uh, basically this is a full exploit by somebody who knows what he's doing, very creative to, to, uh, to completely compromise the uh, the browser aspect of web surfing on that machine, even to the point of leaving some stuff behind, which continues to have an effect. So it, it's just a it, it's a breathtaking compromise, all based on this idea that a USB device, which you may, should not be trusted, might be a network. And the fact that our systems at the moment, they don't pop up a dialogue. They, they, they don't make you click OK to confirm that you want to enumerate this new newly appeared network device. They just do it uh, across the board. So, I mean, it's uh, <laughs> so he says for features, emulates an Ethernet device over USB, hijacks all Internet traffic from the machine, despite being a low priority unknown network interface siphons and stores HTTP cookies and sessions from the web browser for the Alexa top 1 million websites. Now, he does that because, remember, anytime your browser responds to a request from one of those sites, it will send whatever cookies it has. So Sammy injects a million tiny hidden iframes into the page. Each of those makes a query to one of a million websites, and that query will contain all the cookies they have. He intercepts that and grabs them, so he has all the cookies that your browser has for Alexa's top 1 million sites. And if any of your sessions are statically logged on, you know, like the, you know, you, you have clicked the box, you know, remember me, so you don't have to re-authenticate every time. Well, that means that that cookie represents you for your logged on session. And if that's then exfiltrated, which his technology also does, the, uh, a remote hacker could then immediately jump on uh, authenticating as you on that site, just like you open, you know, j j just like you went to the site fresh and it remembered that you were had been logged on before and you said, don't ask me any anymore. Um, he's able to expose the internal router that is your internal router that you're connecting to the Internet by to an external attacker, making it accessible remotely via an outbound WebSocket and, and DNS spoofing. He can install a persistent web-based backdoor for HTTP uh, cached objects uh, for hundreds of thousands of domains. He even poisons uh, JavaScript libraries being sent by major uh, content delivery networks. Um, uh, does not require the machine to be unlocked, and these backdoors and remote access persist even after the device is removed and the attacker, as he puts it, shash sashays away. <laughs> so uh, it's a great video. Uh, I'm delighted that he's going to be on Know How because I'm I'm sure uh, I, I would give our our listeners a, a pointer to that Leo because oh, I'm yeah. sure oh, yeah. uh, they will get a kick out of. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what week, but yeah, 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 it'll be fun. Yeah.
And then we will, uh, the following, uh, as soon as they tape that, we'll put a bit of it into uh, new screensavers. But, I mean, it's one of those things where I think we want to spend some significant time with him uh, demonstrating yeah, well, the whole thing. Yeah, well, and for securing against it, notice that everything I was talking about does – that is in terms of traffic capture, since he isn't and probably can't mess with cookies – I mean, I'm sorry, mess with certificates um, – there's no way for him, and he he says that all of this is HTTP. So, to for servers to secure against this, the only thing servers can do is use HTTPS exclusively, use HSTS, the strict transport security, to always be. To, to, to allow browsers, because when, when users don't put HTTPS into the browser, they typically just www. And we've talked about how unfortunate it is that browsers still try HTTP as the default protocol. It'll be interesting to see when that changes. I wouldn't be surprised if that's something that we see Google lead with with, with Chrome when they have when their tests have demonstrated that it won't break too many things because it would sure be nice if browse at, at some point browsers instead of defaulting to HTTP first tried HTTPS or maybe tried them both at once and and used the 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 more secure the HTTPS if it also succeeds when when they haven't been told one way or the other. And then finally, remember that cookies, when cookies are set, they can have a secure flag set, which prohibits the browser from sending them with its queries over a non-HTTPS connection. So if all the cookies, like session cookies, for example, which are sensitive, if, if those were – if those had the secure flag set, then they would not be exposed in an HTTP attack. And, and on the on the desktop side, he said, you know, that's fine for the servers. On the desktop side, Sammy suggests, as he put it, adding cement to your USB and Thunderbolt ports can be effective. <laughs> not on my new MacBook, no way. <laughs> no. <laughs> And he says, closing your browser, that is shutting the browser down, closing your browser every time you walk away from your machine can work, but, he says, is practically impractical. Uh, disabling USB or Thunderbolt ports is also effective, though also impractical. And he says, locking your computer has no effect as the network and USB stacks operate while the oh, machine is locked. That's interesting. However, yeah, it is. However, going into an encrypted sleep mode, uh -huh. meaning, you know, where you you where it writes the RAM out and encrypts it. Hibernation. And it's, it's hibernation, right. Uh, he, he calls it encrypted sleep, uh, where a key is required to decrypt the memory and he, he, see, he says, for example, File Vault 2 and Deep Sleep solves most of the issues as your browser will no longer make requests mm. even if woken up. Mm. And for all this, the source code is on GitHub. So, and this is not, I mean, this is not, there, there, there's no one to disclose this to responsibly. This we knew about in, in early September He's just taken it to its logical extent. That is, oh, wow, you mean I can get a, a – the, the, the machine is going to make a DHCP query of my own little custom DHCP server when I plug it into USB? Oh, I know what I can do with that. And so here's another <laughs> instance, as we often said, that attacks never, never get worse. They only get better. Yeah. And so this is three months' worth of – of evolution of a problem. And again, this isn't exploiting any vulnerability. There's nothing to fix anywhere except, you know, maybe if a if a machine is locked and closed, you might wonder why the OS would default to enumerating and bringing that port online. So, and maybe even the default option should be, you know, always prompt before uh, 
recognizing a new network connection to this machine. Because as we're seeing, network connections are dangerous. They, they just get up to too much mischief.